Undisclosed location behind enemy lines. Uh oh. 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 oh, very titillating. Um, so, uh, good morning, sir. So, I, you know, good morning. As uh, Chris always tells me, I know that they just do this to own the libs, but Tucker Carlson uh, last night uh, said the Texas Democratic lawmakers who fled the state to deny the legislature the quorum necessary to vote on an elections bill were actually committing an act of insurrection. His, he okay. began by slamming Joe Biden for saying in a speech earlier that the Republican legislature's effort to make it more difficult to vote is the biggest crisis of democracy since the Civil War, which it is. Mm-hmm. And he said, sound overheated to you, even allowing for the dementia. It was a stunningly irresponsible oh. thing for an American leader to say out loud. Uh, dangerous, even. So Joe Biden saying it is dangerous and it is an insurrection to uh, leave to <laughs> prevent a vote, not, right. not beating a Capitol police officer to death with an American flag. Your thoughts, sir? Well, I mean, was it an insurrection when uh, Ted Cruz took his baggage and tried to fly to Cancun? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, if we're going to be redefining words here. A dereliction that, of duty. Know, Thank you. Oh, well, yes. Or, or defector or, you know, I mean, there's, there's nothing to be said good about Tucker Carlson. Let's just put this on the table. I actually had a, a person who was in Paris send a photograph with F. Tucker on the <laughs> wall. And believe me, I'm going to send that to you so you can put it up on your website. Okay. Uh, be- because, no, there aren't any Tuckers in the world, right? Uh, so that being said, this man is the supreme propagandist of the insurrectionists now. And in uh, the book that I'm going to be having come out soon enough, uh, on the which I predicted the entirety of the insurrection, and a a generational long insurgency, starting with a political insurgency where we are right now, it requires propagandists like this to carry out the strategy I call D-A-R-F. And that is deny, attack, revenge, and fear. And right now they are in the deny phase of a Republican strategy to reinvent everything that's happened in the last year they are trying to deny that donald trump lost the election they're denying joe biden is president of the united states and now they're trying to say that there never was an insurrection in the capitol you know i watched that new york times video yeah. the other day which went step by step that was an extremely violent forty thousand people descending on the capitol several thousand penetrating the building engaged in furious hand-to-hand combat. And that's what Officer Mike Fanone and all the rest who said there, people who lost eyes, fingers, uh, who were traumatized from this. It was furious hand-to-hand combat using American flag and Blue Lives Matter flags and Trump flags as spears and javelins on the policemen. And Tucker Carlson is the vehicle and mouthpiece to deny any of this happened. So I guess all of our lying eyes um, are, 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 are continuing to lie to us. But his audience are drones. By the way, they are a cult. Yeah. By the way, you know, speaking of you as a Navy, as a military man, I mean, I get now mm-hmm. when I watch all this footage, Malcolm, what I think, I don't know if it was Michael Fanon or someone who has served said, right. I have never been involved because that's not way, the way our military generally you're not involved in hand-to-hand combat mm-hmm. for hours. I mean, has anyone asked these right. Republicans, why do you think two Capitol policemen killed themselves after this? Why do you think they all have PTSD and have lost fingers and eyes and it, on and on, right? I mean, it just, they don't, it, 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 that's, that, yeah, because even people that serve aren't used to, to that level in some cases of combat, right? No one has been in hand-to-hand combat, really. I mean, you know, you go door to door, You can get in tight situations. I've been around ambushes and suicide car bombs. These are events that might last minutes, even if you're on the offensive, like in Fallujah, a matter of hours, but you're in elements. And what happened here was human mass. That was 
thousands and thousands of them putting their bodies against you. And, you know, the only thing that didn't happen was, and I was part of the group that was identifying many of these insurrectionists and seditionists. There were guns there. We have photographs right. of people carrying concealed pistols, concealed knives. Yeah. These things were there. The only thing they didn't do was use them yeah. at the time. But if the police had started firing, no doubt, it would have turned into a raging gun battle. Yeah. But they don't care. They keep saying they that. Oh, this was an unarmed, an unarmed peaceful tourist mm -hmm. visit. And and by the way, FBI oh agents God. have seized another cache of guns belonging to the insurrectionist who had the Lego set of the U.S. Capitol as well as notes about right. forming a militia. So, you know, we have one more. Oh, how about this one? How about this guy? A day after the re uh, release of a video appearing to show him mistaking the U.S. Capitol for the White House, a federal judge granted oh. bond to a QAnon adherent charged with storming the building. He incorrectly identified... I'm sorry, bunch of dumbasses. This Citing is... the video and making that decision, the judge said the QAnon believer does not appear as though he could have planned or coordinated the siege of the U.S. Capitol when he appeared to have no basic understanding of where he even was that day. The video of his, he said, this is me touching the White House. And it's he's at the... So, uh, really? Dumbassery is going to be a, is, is a defense <laughs> that you get bond and instead of jail? And it Yeah. It was, and his lawyers got him to be on home, you know, home restriction. He's at home now. He's not in jail. And right. I'm going to be honest with you. Many of these insurrectionists are not in jail, and they are not getting, and the people who are pleading are not getting severe sentences. The FBI, for, you know, for better or worse, and the Department of Justice, they're going after the bigger fish. You know, all of these people are being used as stepping stones to get to the conspiracy here. And there is a conspiracy. I, I outline it in this new book that's coming out. Yeah. The uh, Proud Boys, the lead, you know, Stuart Rose, the leader of the Plow, uh, the leader of Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys and uh, the three percent militia. They had been coordinating as early as as um, as six November 2020 in order to start showing up at rallies with guns and preparing quick reaction forces with guns in Virginia. They came to the December 12th rally with the intent to do street combat with Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And they were appointing themselves as these brown shirts who were protecting the White House. And after December 12th rally, they started coordinating how they were going to attack the Capitol. And to tell you the truth, that's what I'm really looking for. Because when you get the head of the Oath Keepers, that group is not a group, you know, I mean, it's armed, it's former armed forces and members of the police forces. But you've got to you've got to brand them for what they are. They are insurrectionist terrorists. Yeah. They intended to destroy democracy. Well, but, they intended yeah. to tear down that building and capture people. And I said this the night the insurrection happened. There are murder cells in that crowd, capture and kill teams. Imagine what they would have done if they had found AOC. Yeah. Imagine what they would have done if they had found Nancy Pelosi, who had a bodyguard team. Yeah. But I mean, by the way, this guy that I just mentioned, the QAnon who we heard, who mistook the Capitol for the White House. So he, and you said nice. he's out on bond, not even in jail. Mm -hmm. He's also on tape. He's one of the, he's spearheading the mob chasing Officer Eugene Goodman. Officer Goodman. Up two flights up a stairs wearing that QAnon T-shirt. So, I mean, seriously, I guess that's what I'm concerned about is I get it. They're going all the way up to the top. But dumbassery is a defense because yeah. he didn't know, you know, he was at the Capitol <clears throat> and not the White House. He, he's still on tape. You know, it, I mean, okay. he, you could you could use that argument. I know he was the lead guy in the Capitol building. Right. And just right. because he was deranged doesn't mean that he wasn't there to do violence or you or to, you know, exercise protest with his fists, sticks, feet and hands. And, you know, that these my problem is there are parts of the judiciary and it's inconsistent all over the country who are giving these people, you know, vacations, allowing them to do these, you know, activities without bracelets. His conditions of bond were that he would not communicate with other insurrectionist that he wouldn't have a telephone he wouldn't he would have to turn in his guns and refrain from alcohol okay these people need the fact that they let him go shows that there's going to be a plea deal for him even though he was the lead guy on the steps attacking the building and this is where we're going to have inconsistent justice and i don't think it's going to be pretty at all no matter you know who you get up further up the chain of command 
you've got to hold these idiots to account to show this is what's going to happen to you. Um, so, Malcolm, I can't wait to read your new book. Chris and I got into a discussion yesterday because mm-hmm. I was saying, um, sadly, <laughs> for for many of us, you have a track record of being right about, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost everything. Everything. Right. And so you were talking, because we were talking about, you know, how dangerous all of this feels. And, you know, you've been warning uh. that you think there's going to be a catastrophic event. And, I, you know, Chris was saying he thinks it's going to come from Outside. without. Outside, and I think what you were referring to is our number one threat is the white supremacist domestic terrorism, which was January sixth. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you're saying a mass casualty event, but from the inside is right. what you meant, correct? Oh no, and 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 not one. I mean, the the title of my my book is called "They Want to Kill Americans." Yeah, and it's Americans, Trump militias, terrorists, and their deranged ideology of an insurgency. We have an insert. You know what? I wrote the title as the coming Trump insurgency. It's here. Yeah. An insurgency always starts with a political decision to have an opposition group that will not use um, political force or political will to engage themselves. They change into a paramilitary force. They use the political side for legitimacy. But we're going to have a, a, a catastrophic event. And it will be Americans. We just had two. Thank incidents you. Well, Chris Lavoy has Chris Lavoy weeks. has as big a track record of being wrong as you do being right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why you, you know, thought it would come steroids. from the outside, but no. I mean, clearly, <laughs> or clearly, Malcolm, you agree with our the FBI, all of our intelligence agencies that yes, it is our number one, uh, you know, threat is domestic terror is you know right wing you know, domestic wh- terrorism. When I started writing this book, which was August twenty twenty. And I went on Bill Maher's show on November 6, 2020, and said, we are going to have an insurgency. And he was like, you mean like the Irish Republican Army? And I was like, yes, this is coming. It came yep. January 6th. An insurgency is a continuing series of these events. I thought they would calm down yeah. and that what we would have is a simmering insurgency. That's not what's happening. The political side is heating up so fast, they're rearming. And they are preparing for open war. This whole thing on the political side of getting Trump as the Speaker of the House in January 2022, they are mobilized to take back the House in in next year, in 2022. And Democrats are arguing about whether they should do infrastructure, whether they should do this and that. Biden didn't even mention filibuster yesterday. We're back on the brink of the end of democracy again. Yeah. They are here to tear down government and install a fascist dictatorship. And we're sitting here arguing about whether we should, you know, you know, we don't even confront people and try to run for school boards. QAnon has announced a strategy to take over American school boards. Whatever you can do as a citizen, do it now. Because, again, we're teetering back on the edge of this thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I am as. <laughs> this is why I've always loved you because I feel like you're the only one that has this sense of urgency. Not the only one. There's a few of us, but you know what I mean. That that. Yeah. I mean, Joy Reid's kind of flipping out every night because it's just I, I, I it's one of those things that it, this is not. None of this is normal and has not been for a long time. And I think we've gotten sort of gotten. I mean, look at all these books coming out. I mean, I don't know which thing well, alarm alarms you the most, but how really close we came. To just absolutely the end of this American experiment, right? Well, we discussed this weekly on this show. And, you know, can I point out, Joy Reid and I for two years were the only people in U.S. news media saying that Trump was pretty much beholden to Moscow. And we were ridiculed as conspiracy theorists. Every week on her show, we were sitting there saying, this is happening, this is happening. This show, we were saying, this is happening, this is happening here. Let me help everybody here in the last of it, okay? I am going to give you some marching orders since people haven't quite figured it out. Yes, sir. It's Master battle Chief. stations, people. Master it's Chief says battle, battle stations. stations. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. There's oh. the message. Oh. Get ready to be prepared once again to fight to save democracy. Start calling Chuck Schumer's office. Yep. Start calling Nancy Pelosi. Start telling these people. It's not just about the filibuster. It's about every aspect of the Democratic Party. We sit and wait around for four years and we lose the House. 
We cannot afford to lose the House next year. Yep. It will be the end of everything. Trump will be the number three person. They're not joking about putting him in as speaker. All they have to do is vote, and he could be Speaker of the House. He doesn't have to be elected. And then they're talking about impeaching Biden and Harris. Yep. You know, J Jason Johnson said that three months ago, yep. that that was their strategy. Yeah. They mean it, people. Yep. Battle stations start fighting for this country again. Don't slack on it. Yes, Master Chief. Okay. Thank ah. you. All right. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. All right. All right. Bye bye. Love you. Thank bye. you. Okay. <laughs> bye. He's it's, wow. He just yells at me, and I just come back asking for more. I'm like, I know it. That's scary, right?